Howdy folks, Kevin here. This is the start of a new series, a um, short mini-series of videos on testing a React-based application. This one specifically called React HN for React Hacker News. It's an open source project that is available on GitHub to download and run locally. It uses the Hacker News Firebase API to get content from Hacker News and is very similar to the Hacker News website itself. But the reason I'm going with this one instead of the Hacker News website itself is I want to be able to run it locally and edit the settings and everything locally. For this video, I'm going to be downloading this GitHub repo locally, installing all the dependencies, running it, then getting WebDriver IO set up and writing my first test, which is just gonna be a very, very basic test, checking out that the landing page loads and it has a menu on it. I'm gonna get started with the install process. And while that's being done, I want to give a quick background on this video and the upcoming ones. I'm keeping this video basic because I'm gonna be going into some page object ideas and I wanna make sure I have time to focus on the concepts behind what I'll be talking about. I'll be getting into more advanced tests in the next few videos. And then hopefully I'll get into how to fake data when loading the website so that you can use fake data instead of the real live data, which will make our test a bit more flexible, a bit more performant, and we can do some neat stuff with that. Okay, now that I've got WebDriver IO installed, I'm going to run it to set up my configuration and go through my standard responses. The local server is gonna run on port 5000, so I'll use that as the base URL. I may get into managing multiple configurations as far as the base URL goes and testing in, in a later video, but for now we're just gonna use the local server. One other thing I need to install is try because I wanna use the expect assertions. Okay, with all that set up, I want to make two more folders. A components folder, which we're going to use for storing components like the menu bar or comment component. We'll talk about components in a later episode. I do want that folder just to be there for now. And then also a pages folder, which is going to have our page objects in it. And then with that, I'm going to open Sublime Text to my current directory. First thing I'm gonna do is edit my configuration file and add a couple more exclude patterns, or rather add two new exclude patterns. The first one ignores any JavaScript files inside of the components directory, and the second one ignores any inside of the pages directory. This makes sure our page objects and components aren't run as tests themselves. Next, I'll change my capabilities to run in Chrome. I don't know if you saw, but I installed the Chrome driver service, which reminds me I need to also install Chrome driver as an NPM dependency. Why don't I go ahead and do that right now? So when you install the Chrome driver service, it installs a service that hooks into WebDriver IO, but it doesn't actually install Chrome driver itself. If you forget to do that, you'll get an error about Chrome driver not being installed correctly. A quick edit here. I also forgot to set the port and path, but my test still ran because I had a Selenium server running in the background outside of this test. So be sure if you're gonna use the Chrome driver service to set a port and path at the top of the file or wherever in your file, um, it does need to be done. There's one more thing I want to do, actually two more things. I'm gonna update the timeout for Mocha to be 60 seconds instead of the default, which I think is either 10 or 30 seconds, which is just not enough for a WebDriver IO test. And then the other thing I wanna do is come into this before and set up chai. So I'll do that by assigning global.expect to the chai expect object. So I require chai and get the expect object off of it and set that to global.expect. This way I can use expect inside of my tests without having to require them at the top of the file. Okay, next I'm gonna come into my specs folder and create a new file called landing.js. This is going to be the test for my landing page. And all we're gonna do in our test is load the landing page, then check that this menu bar exists. So I'll set up my describe and it blocks. And then inside of this, it block, I'm gonna put a basic assertion that says that we expect the landing page menu dot is existing to be true. Landing page dot menu, we haven't defined landing page yet, we haven't defined menu yet, but is existing might be familiar for you if you recognize it from WebDriver IO. It is a WebDriver IO command that you can run on elements. So the menu element is going to be a WebDriver IO element and landing page is gonna be our page object. We also need to load the page before running our test. So I'll create a before each block. And normally I go with a browser.url here, but I'm going to use my page object to load the page using landing page.load. Now, where does this load come from? Well, we haven't built it out yet, but we will in just a second. 
So next, I need to come up here and require my landing page that I haven't created yet, but I'll go ahead and pretend that I have. So I'll create a new constant, define a landing page variable, and then require the landing.js file from the pages directory. So this is what my test is going to look like. I need to make the actual landing page object. So to do that, I need to create a new file, and I'm going to call it landing.page.js so that it's not confused with this landing.js test file. I'll go ahead and move it over to this split pane layout so that I can see the two files side by side. In this file, I'm going to define a new class, and then I'm going to add a module.exports at the bottom so that Node knows what to look for when loading the file. I'm going to export a new landing page object. And before I add anything to this landing page, what I want to do is create a generic page, which I'm going to use for my load function. So in my landing page at the top, I'm going to require a new file called page.js, and I'm going to assign that to my local page variable. And then I'm going to use the extends keyword to extend that page file. OK, the next thing I want to do is create that page file that I just talked about. And I'll create that in the pages folder. I'll use a capital P for page, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But I'll start off with my class and then my module.exports. I'll actually move this over so that you can see the two files side by side. In landing page, we export a new landing page object. In the page file, all we're doing is exporting this class. And the reason for this is this exporting just the class allows us to extend it in our page file. So you can think of this page file as a generic page that doesn't have any specifics to it. And we're going to use that generic page to build off of with our other pages. So inside of our generic page, we are going to define a load function. And that load function is going to be used to load the page that we want to load. In this case, we're going to do browser.url. And then inside of here, we're going to need to pass in a path of the URL that we want to load. Where does that path come from? Well, this is where this hierarchy comes into play. So when I create my landing page, I want to define a path to save. And in this case, we're going to use a constructor function inside of our page file to store that path. So I'll come up to the top of my page. And I'm going to define a constructor function. The constructor function is a specific function used when defining classes that gets run whenever the class itself is created. And that happens over here at the new landing page. So when we call new landing page, it's going to create a new instance of a landing page. Since that landing page extends our generic page, it's going to build off of that generic page and see, OK, that generic page has a constructor in it. Let's go ahead and run it. And it's expecting a path variable to be passed into the constructor, but we don't have that defined yet. So I need to jump back into my landing page. And I'm going to define a, another constructor function. And this time, instead of signing anything, I'm going to call the super function. And inside of it, I'm going to pass path that I want to load. In this case, since it's the root page, it's just going to be dot slash. That's going to load the root of my URL, which is going to be my landing page. Super is another one of those special words that's telling this class to run the constructor of the class that it extends. So it's going to call the constructor, but pass along specific data. In this case, it's the path that we're going to call. So that's where that path is going to come from. It comes from the landing page constructor argument. There's one more thing I want to add to my page, and that's going to be the menu element that I want to reference. And I'm going to need a selector for this. So if I jump back over to this example app and do right click inspect, I can see that the header, the menu has a class of app header. So that's what we'll use for our selector. And now because I've defined my menu on my generic page, any page that extends that generic page is also going to have that menu. So if I come back to my landing test, let's move this back over. You can see my landing page both has the dot load function that was defined and then the menu property from my generic page as well. 
So on my landing page, I'm going to want to define a few more specifics to this landing page. But right now, the only thing I'm really defining in here is the path to the landing page so that the load function knows what to do. Let's go ahead and try this out. I've got my Chester tool, UI tool. I'm going to add a new project. I'll call it React HN for React Hacker News. And then open my folder. Now I can run my tests. Two things. First, this pattern test components did not match any file. That's because we haven't defined any files inside of the components directory yet. We can just ignore this for now. The other thing is that it says expected false to be true. And the reason for this is I forgot to start my server for my local instance of this React Hacker News site. But before I start that, I want to make this error message be a little bit nicer. And I can add a second argument to this expect call. And that argument will be the error message that gets displayed if this assertion fails. So we're going to have that error message be menu not found. And let's go ahead and run that test again to see what that error message looks like. So now instead of just plain expected false to be true, we have menu not found expected false to be true. So that helps point the way for the specific error that we ran into. Now I'll come back over here and I'm going to call npm start, which starts my local server. Something is still going wrong. I mean, I messed up a little bit here. I forgot to pass in the path to my browser.url. That's definitely an important thing in order to load the correct URL. So let's go ahead and try that test again. And there we go, we have our test passing. So there you have a very basic test with some complex ideas behind it. You have your test file that describes a landing page and loads the landing page object. Then you have your landing page object itself, which extends off of the generic page object, which we have on the far right, which the page object, the page page object, has a constructor that defines a path that stores it for later. It stores common elements like menu, and we could add footer in here as well. And then common actions like load. All our pages are going to have a load function. This one just takes that path that was stored and passes it through the WebDriver IO call. You can see in our test, we actually don't make any WebDriver IO calls inside of our test itself. We don't reference any specific element selectors inside of there. All we do is call our page object to load the page and to reference the elements by the name that we've given them. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll be back with another one soon going into more advanced page objects, we're going to get into components and how you can add components to complement your pages and reuse different components across multiple pages. Thanks for watching. And as always, feel free to add a comment down below, letting me know if you have any questions or ideas for future videos.